Welcome to Power in Jesus with Apostle Johnson Powell. Those that have ears, let them hear. Those that have eyes, let them see. Watch and be blessed. Greetings in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Apostle Judson Powell, and this is Power in Jesus. Well, welcome to our Bible study. I'm glad you could make it. And um, today I would like to give to you a word that God has put in my spirit, a prophetic word. And I would like to um, just share this with the body of Christ. It's mainly for leadership. So anybody that is a five-fold minister, anybody that's an apostle, a, 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 a evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, or a prophet, uh, this word is for you. Also, all the lay ministers, which would be bishops, deacons, and elders, those also, anyone that is leading people to Christ or is trying to uh, work in deliverance or work in any field of ministry, uh, this is a message that I'd like for you uh, just to check out because God laid this on my heart. And I guess the reason why is in my prayer life, uh, I kept asking God, why do you keep sending me all these people? There are so many people uh, that are experiencing church hurt. And when I say church hurt, I'm talking about they've been under abusive leaders or they've been under leadership that has not uh, helped them to develop or grow spiritually. And there are a lot of people that are operating in pulpits and operating in churches that have not really uh, been called by God. And we know that. So, um, but if you have been called by God, then there's a difference. There's a difference in being called and just not having the knowledge or the wisdom in order to operate in the office. And then that, that requires you to go back and do some more studying or some more uh, praying in order so that you can uh, get to the point where you are able to be an effective minister. But there are some people that they are not called. They just decided they're going to do it uh, because it's of their own will or their own free will. So we know that these people do exist out there in the body of Christ. The problem is, is that when they get hold of believers, uh, they, they usually end up hurting them or abusing them in some way, shape, form, or fashion. So now, what do we do? And this is one of the things that I asked God. I said, what do we do so that we know that we are not abusing these people? And so the first thing that I always do is, well, God gave me some scripture. When I started praying, God gave me scripture. And so um, the scripture he gave me is in Luke chapter four. And uh, we can start at verse 17. So we're going to we're going to go to Luke chapter four and start at verse 17. And the reason why. Uh, I believe God gave me this particular uh, scripture. Not only it appears twice, it also appears uh, in the book of Isaiah. In fact, it's the prophecy of Isaiah and Jesus, when he is teaching or when he is asked to teach and he stands up in the synagogue or in the church, when he stands up and he's getting ready to uh, preach, uh, he goes to this book and this is what he says. And so, um, Verse 17 says, and there was delivered unto him a book of the prophet Isaiah or Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And it said the spirit, verse 18 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those that are bruised. And verse 19 says, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And this is also, once again, found in Isaiah uh, chapter 61. All right, so now, here is the deal. If you are a minister and you are doing anything else to the people that you are leading or ministering to besides preaching the gospel to them, healing their broken hearts, preaching the deliverance to them that are captive, or recovering of sight. And when he says recovering of sight to the blind, he's not only talking about, uh, he's not just talking about physical sight, because we know that many times the metaphor is used that those that have ears, let them hear. Those that have eyes, let them see. Meaning your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears are open so that you can hear from God. All right. And then the other thing is in, to preach and then to set at liberty those that are bruised, okay? So now, as we go forth as ministers of the gospel, 
what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to give comfort to these people as a priest after the order of Melchizedek. The way we are to minister is in righteousness, in love, and in peace. You are not supposed to be beating people up with the Bible, with the word. That's another thing. There are a lot of people that are beating people up with this word. That is not what we're supposed to do. This word, you may have knowledge of the word, but you may not have wisdom of the word. And I talk about this all the time. There's a, there's a vast difference between wisdom and knowledge. And even I, at, at, at various points in my ministry, I understood that. I used to be very legalistic. I used to be a person uh, that, was, that was to the letter of the law and, and to the letter of what the word said. However, we know that the letter kills and the spirit is what gives life. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to lead people from, from being those babes or those people that are on milk to being those people that are on meat. But the only way that you can do that is with love and, and, and peace and in righteousness, just like under the order of Melchizedek, which Jesus is the high priest of our order. All right. So now when we go as fivefold ministers and we're going out there in order to teach and preach this gospel, what we have to do is we have to gather people and we have to get them together in that sort of in that sort of spirit. All right. Because, look, remember what he says in the verse. He says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. So he's talking about our heavenly father, our everlasting father, the most high God, his his daddy. He's basically saying, look, his spirit is upon me. So the first thing that we need to do is realize that whenever we're ministering, we have to minister in the spirit of the Lord. All right. We have to minister in the spirit of the Lord. And once again, God is love. So the number one spirit that we must be, be looking at is not only the spirit of Christ, but also the spirit of love. If you are not ministering in love and in peace and in righteousness, which is what we do as Melchizedek priests, then you are out of order and you are ministering incorrectly and you are leading people astray. All right. And all these people that that have all these 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 doctrines of men and doctrines of devils, you have there's a lot of this going around. People telling people uh, that they can't leave churches or that they uh, or that, you know, they have to be released by the pastor or they or they have to uh, pay a certain amount of money into the church or they have to do certain things or, or else they're cursed, telling people that they're going to be cursed or that they're uh, they're not uh, they're not worthy and all these different things. Things where everybody that has been baptized and has received the Holy Ghost is worthy to be in the kingdom of, of heaven. In fact, they're in the kingdom of heaven and you should treat them as a brother or a sister. You should treat them as such. The other thing is leadership should not be so puffed up where they cannot accept correction or they cannot be talked to. And many times we have leadership where they don't even talk to the people that are sitting in the pews. Well, how can that possibly be? It is impossible to minister to people unless you talk to them and you are in relationship with them. Just like you, you have a relationship through prayer and through reading the word and through worship and through praise through with God. Well, you also have to have a relationship with the people that you minister to. If you have no relationship, if you are out of relationship with the people that you minister to, or if you do not put things, and I'm not saying if you have a, a huge congregation that you have to minister individually to everybody, but you should set up the ministerial staff or enough. you should have enough other ministers in your congregation where they can take care of the needs of everyone that comes in to be ministered to in your church. If you don't have that set up, then you are once again, you are out of order and you are not operating the church according to how Christ would have you operate the church. All right, because when these people come in, they need they need the fivefold ministry gifts in order to help them what in order for them to what have the gospel preached to them, to heal the brokenhearted, to give them deliverance. All right, recovering of sight to the spiritually blind and to set at liberty those that are bruised. All right, so remember, keep on listening because that is our mission statement. That is the mission statement. When he said it, and then. What I love about this in verse 20, he says, and then he closed the book and he gave it to him again to the minister and he sat down and the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. All right. That's verse 20. That's Luke chapter four, verse 20. And then he said, and he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears because he was telling them, look, I am that type of minister. 
this is the type of minister that we have because remember the minister that he handed that that the the verses to the minister that he handed the book to he was a levitical priest so he was holding people he was not he was not operating in the dispensation of grace and he was holding people strictly to the letter of the law all right and once again i like to be very transparent about this i i used to be that way so I'm a Pharisee, I'm a legalist, I'm all of that stuff, but now that I, I understand the concept of grace, and now that I realize how Jesus intended for us to minister, it's a little, it's a little bit different story, all right? So I understand. So when people come to you, a lot of times they're being tormented. They're being oppressed. They are not there. Many people are not in sin because they want to be. They're in sin because of the demonic activity that is taking place around them. So now look, I want to briefly just run to, uh, I want to go to 2 Timothy. And uh, I want to go to um, chapter 2. So I'm, I'm turning now to, to uh, 2 Timothy and Timothy and your tea books, your Titus, Timothy, and Thessalonians, your tea books, all the tea books in the Bible, those books are there to teach us how to be effective ministers. So if you're having trouble ministering to people or you just don't know the right direction, well, the Bible is, is self-explanatory. It go you can go there and you can figure out, well, how did Paul instruct Timothy and Titus in order to be effective ministers? Okay, so once again, and then you have the leadership of the apostle showing the other ministers this is what you do. This is how you stir the gifts up in the people. All right. So now I want you to go to, uh, once again, second, the, the, the second epistle uh, of Timothy. And I want you to go chapter two and let's go to, let's go to verse 20. Okay. He says, um, he says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor. OK, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared for every good work. All right. So now so he's giving us the blueprint. He's telling us, look, he's like he's like. He's like, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet, or he will be able to be used by the master. He'll be useful. Okay. So now he says, so, so what you, so we're, so as ministers, you're trying to make yourself a vessel of honor. Okay. So that's the first thing. And it then verse 22, he says, flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Okay, so these people that are coming to you that are seeking after the Lord and that are calling on the Lord out of a pure heart, he's telling us, he says, look, when we when we minister to them, we have to follow righteousness, faith, and we know the word charity is love. Okay, so we're looking at love. So he's telling us, he says, righteousness, faith, love, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Okay, so this is how we're supposed to minister in righteousness, in peace, in love, in faith. Those are the things that we're supposed to be ministering. We are not supposed to be hitting people, bam, over the head with the Bible uh, because they're not doing everything 100% correctly. All right, because you and you, the other thing is, you got to remember, recall when you were mired in your sin and you wanted someone to have compassion on you. You wanted somebody to come and, and put their arm around you and love on you. So you got to understand that these things never change. They're not, it's not going to change. So the same thing when you were led to Christ or when you gave your life to Christ or what Christ chose you at that particular point, all right, there were circumstances and things that went into place, but you, you wanted understanding, love, and compassion. That's what you wanted, all right? And he says, so now, verse 23, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender stripes. So that's why he said that, that these people that call on the Lord out of a pure heart, not somebody who just wants to argue about, you know, and, 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 and that's another big thing that goes on. Not somebody who just wants to argue with you 
about you know whether or not Jesus is real or whether or not Jesus exists or whether or not Jesus came and all of that stuff. That you, you don't need to argue with people about that. You and that's not and when we're called to minister, that's not what we're talking about. Tell people about the Lord. They have the choice whether to accept them or not. And if they don't accept them, don't sit there and argue with them and try to make them accept Christ. That's not your job. Your job as a minister is not to force anything on anybody. All right. They, they have free will, so they can either accept Christ or they can reject them. It's up to them. So basically, that's their decision. Okay, choose ye this day. Life or death, blessings or curses. It's up to you. You can decide what you want to choose. Choose the Lord or you can choose something else. So that's their decision. But don't get into arguments with people about that. And many people, they think, they think that, and, and remember, it is the Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit that is going to the Holy Ghost that is going to convict their hearts to make them give their life to Christ anyway. It's not you. All you're doing, you're just planting and watering and sowing a seed that, that one day that the Spirit may overtake them and then they will be uh, placed into the kingdom. So that's all, your, that's all your job is. Your job is not to beat people. Once again, your job is not to beat people over the head with the Bible. And then when you get them into the church, it's not to abuse them and to use them. It's to deliver them, to run them through deliverance. And remember, there is a huge, and, and, and we talk, there is a huge difference between salvation and deliverance. See, you can be saved. You're going to heaven. Okay, once you give your life to the Lord, it doesn't really matter. Your sin doesn't really matter anymore because sin doesn't have dominion over you at that point. Okay, because now you are in the last book of life. Once you're in the last book of life, what you're doing now is, you, but you still, before you make the transition, before your physical death, before you make that transition, you still have to live in the here and now. You've got to live out the rest of whatever your natural life is here on the earth. So while you're living out your natural life here on the earth, the closer you stick to this word, yes, it's going to make your life easier. The other thing is the more deliverance you get from demonic and satanic and Luciferian forces, the more deliverance that you receive, the better your life will be. But it, it, you'll be, and the devil is constantly trying to turn. Remember, he's roaming around like a roaring lion seeing who he can devour. He's trying to kill, steal, and destroy. So you do have an adversary, all right? So while you're here in this realm, in this earth realm, and your life is in this earth realm, while you're here, you still have things to contend with. And that is what deliverance is, getting yourself delivered from all of those other forces that are outside of the spirit of God. All right, because there are other spirits and there are other gods that are vying for your, for your soul, for your body. They want your body. All right. And there's all kind of this. And I mean, there's, there's literally tons of them. So what you have to do is, so you, you have to go through deliverance. And in fact, whatever, any major step that you make in your life, you should go through deliverance before you make those steps. And as soon as people get in the church, that's another thing. As soon as people get in the church, they should start going through deliverance. And some people, yes, they are delivered instantly. I want to make this note about deliverance. Some people are delivered instantly, but then there are some people where deliverance is a process. OK, so you because maybe all of everything didn't get out of them or there are people that that face attack. We talk about backsliding and stuff like that where there well, well, there are people that face further attack. Well, when they face further attack, then they need to be walked through deliverance again. All right. They need to be taken through deliverance once again. And the ministers in the church should be aware of that. And that's why I say that as a minister that or inside of your congregation, you need to be on a relationship basis with everybody in your congregation because that's how people, there's no reason why somebody should sit in your church for 30 years and not be delivered and, and walking around and still got the same stuff on them that they had when they first walked in the church. It just shouldn't be like that, all right? And that's how you know whether or not you are being an effective minister or you're not being an effective minister. And that's how you know whether your congregation is effective because if you're, if you're, not, if you're not delivering people then there's, there's, why, why are they coming to church? They're already saved. So now the next step is deliverance. Okay. So after, and, and the evangelist goes out, brings the people, gets the people into the church, evangelizes, gets them into the church. Well, then after that, the teacher and the pastor need to get a hold of them and the prophet and the, and the apostle need to get a hold of them so that we can understand where, what their spiritual DNA is, where they are spiritually. And then we need to help them 
with whatever they're lacking in so that they will not be what? They won't be hurt. They won't be oppressed. They won't be dismayed and they won't be in so much pain, uh, you know, because they're going through or they're always going through. And a lot of a lot of the things that we talk about, trials and tribulations and afflictions and everything else is just because we're not doing effective ministry. All right. So now let's go back to Timothy. He says and, and then he says, verse 24. So we're in Second Timothy uh, verse 24, uh, chapter 2, verse 24, he says, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach and patient. All right? So think about it. He says, In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Okay? He says, Preadventure, he said that God, he says, If God, preadventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. So you see that the devil's will, and, and when I preach that, people, sometimes they get upset when I say, look, there are three wills at work. There's your will, there's God's will, and there's the devil's will, okay? The devil is trying to get in there too, all right? So understand this, but look what he's saying. He says that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. And he says, give them, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. That God will give them repentance, okay, to the acknowledging of the truth of who? Of Jesus Christ. All right, the fact that, look, if they get into Christ, because look, remember, once you're in Christ, then you're a new creature. Behold, all things are new. So the spirit of the Lord, and of course, we're talking about where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, OK, so when people people should not be in your church bound and held captive by the enemy. And if they are, they need to be walked through deliverance. They don't need to be sitting in your church bound. And there are so many there are so many believers that are sitting in churches. I mean, millions of not. I'm not and, and this is this is I run, but millions, not just thousands or hundreds or anything like that. We're talking about there are millions of believers that are bound and that are in the snare of the enemy. And it's all because a lot of us are just not doing, and, and one of the main causes is the religious spirit, okay? Because instead of being, being led by the Holy Ghost, we are led by a religious spirit. So we do things out of tradition, and we do things because uh, they make us feel good, or we do things because, uh, because they're, they're the, low, the road less traveled, or they're, they're, there's, no, there's no resistance to them. OK, so the reason so we do that because what people people want to feel good. And yes, they want to feel good. Some things in the gospel are tough. And I'm not saying that that this means we should go out and, and, and you know, and be very strict. But what I'm saying is, is that, look, we have to be in relationship with one another. That's why he said, don't forsake uh, the gathering together or the fellowshipping. That's why he said that should confess your faults one to it, one to another. Those are things that it should be done in the congregation. That's why instead of, and the other thing is, and the religious spirit makes us go to church and sit there with a shroud over us, acting like we're perfect or like there's nothing wrong in our lives. Well, we should be going into church and saying, look, I'm all messed up. I need help. That's what should be going on inside of the church. It's a hospital. It ain't it, you go in there and ask for help and get help. Say, look, I need a minister to deliver me. I need a minister to set me free. I need some. I need the prophet to prophesy over me so I don't go in the wrong direction and make a mistake. I need, I need the teacher to teach me what this means, what these scriptures mean. I need wisdom. I need knowledge. I need whatever. Whatever you need, you need to be able to go in that congregation, in that church, and you need to be able to get it on a spiritual basis. And you are not being developed spiritually then why are you going to church? You're wasting your time. And that's not and, and that's not honoring God. That is not honoring God. Just by going to church, that's just, all that is, you know, just like we always say, uh, just because uh, you, you stand in the middle of a garage does not make you a car. And just by going inside of a church does not make you a Christian. There's, action, there's things that you can do in order to, to walk out your faith. All right? And some of the things that and some of the things that the ministers are not doing, the fivefold ministries is not doing. And then a lot of people, they get hung up. But 
everything, and that's another thing, the ministry should be to edify and to and to make the body of Christ come into one accord and into unity. It should not be in order to split us up or to make us have all these hundred thousand million different doctrines. What it should be, the, it, because the spirit, he said, test the spirit by the spirit. There's only one spirit. That's the spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Every other spirit is is a is a is a spirit of antichrist. So either is is of Christ or is antichrist. There's no in between. You understand what I'm saying? There's, there is no in between. So many people come and they say, oh, well, this, that. No, it's like it's either of Christ, either either you're confessing Christ or you're confessing the ways of Christ. Because what? He tells us to make disciples. That means to be disciplined in the things of Jesus Christ. Not to be. We're so so we, we are supposed to handle situations in life the way Christ handled it. We're supposed to minister the way Christ handled it. And I'll just throw this in and, and I thank the Holy Ghost for just throwing this into me. Just like take take for example the woman caught in adultery, right? Okay. And and what do we do? We're condemning. Christ never condemned her. You understand? There's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. We are condemning. So when we get people that are that are in sin, we all we want to do is be busybodies, talk about them, gossip about them, instead of what taking them through deliverance and saying and then saying, look, go in peace and sin no more. Helping them and and part of deliverance is helping them through the process of repentance, right? Because that's that's our job. That's our job as ministers is to help people through these situations in their lives. That's what ministering is. All right. But if you but if, if all you're going to do is 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 crack the whip on them, then that's not delivering them. All that is is for is put them further into bondage. And that's not the intention of the church. That's not what the church is there for. The church is there to heal, deliver and set people free. All right. Well, that's all the time I have. I thank everybody for tuning in. This has been Power in Jesus. I'm Apostle Judson Powell. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Yeah. <laughs> you have been watching Power in Jesus. If these messages have been a blessing to you, please send a love offering to Wonderful Temple, V Security Drive, Greenville, South Carolina, 29611. If you desire prayer, please call 864 757 4033. That's 864 757 4033. Remember, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Even in your sins, God sent His Son Jesus Christ to redeem you from your sins and give you eternal life. Come to Jesus just as you are. He can repair you and restore you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus saves.